In the previous video, we talked about two methods for calculating credit card interest, the unpaid balance method and the average daily balance method. In this video, we'll look at some examples and we'll calculate interest using the average daily balance method. Okay, so here's an explanation of how this works. Um, previously, we said that um, this interest gets charged if you leave any sort of balance on the card um, for any of the days in one of these months. All right, so it's not like the unpaid balance method where if you pay off the card by the end of the month, then there is no fee for using the card. So here's an example, and I've simplified the numbers so that this will work out um, nicely for us, but this gives you an idea of how the average daily balance is calculated. So let's say that there's a credit card with a $0 balance on the card as of August 31st. Um, then on September 1st, a purchase of $300 is made, but then on September 2nd, this person pays off the credit card. Okay, a payment of $300 is made. So that brings the, the balance of the card back down to $0 for the rest of the month from September 3rd all the way through 30th. Okay, so the average daily balance method, um, again, we're just finding an average here. So think about um, you know previous experience that you've had in calculating averages. All right, let's say you have test scores of 80, 70, and 90. How do you find your average? Well, you add these three up, and then you divide by the total number of um, things that you're trying to average, in this case, three. So to average the daily balance, we need to add up all of the daily balances in September and then divide, okay, so we're going to add up all the, the daily balances for each day in September, 30 different days, and then divide by how many days there are, or how many things we added. So in this case, we would divide by 30. All right, so this one shouldn't be too bad to add. Um, on the first, we have $300 on the card. Okay. Then on the second, that's when the payment's made, so technically the balance was still carried. Um, uh, let's let's say that the person paid it, I guess, like at the, the end of the first or the beginning of the second. All right, so then on September 2nd, the balance would be down to $0 again. And then all of the rest of the, um, the days in the month would have $0 on the card. Okay, so I'll put dot, 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 all the way to 0. Okay, and then we're going to divide by the 30 days in September. So 300 divided by 30 would be $10. Okay, so this person carried an average of $10 per day. And if you add it up, $10 per day for 30 days, that does add up to 300. So now, um, even though this is paid off by the end of the month, they're going to get charged some interest on this $10 amount. So here's how this process works. Um, we find the balance as of each transaction. So this time we want to go through and record on all the different days of the month any purchases and payments that were made and figure out what's the balance that's being carried on the card um, as of each day. Then we find the number of days for each balance and multiply the balance by the number of days and find the sum. So in other words, if we had um, a balance of $30 for like 10 days, this step with this multiplication, this is saying rather than add up $30 10 times for 10 days, instead I can summarize and say, okay, there was a $30 balance for 10 days, and then maybe there was a $50 balance for the other 20 days in the month. Okay, I've run off the screen there, but that's um, 20 times 50, okay, 20 days carrying a $50 balance. Um, at, we're adding all of that up because that's part of the steps in finding an average and then we're dividing by the number of days in the month so that we find an average. That brings us to the last two steps. We want to find the finance charge by multiplying that average daily balance by the monthly rate. So if it was 2%, then we would do 0 0.02 times whatever that average daily balance was. Okay. And then finally, we want the new balance. So we would just look at the last balance that's carried on the card and add on the interest rate. Okay, that's an overview. I think this will be more clear as we work through an example. So example seven, 
Betty's credit card statement showed the following transactions during the month of August. Um, on August 1st, she was carrying a previous balance of $165.50. This is like the unpaid balance that we talked about before. All right, so that's left over from, um, from July. So that's the balance on the card all the way to August 7th. Then she makes a purchase of $59.95, so the balance on the card is going to go up. She makes another purchase on the 12th. Then the 18th, she makes a payment, and the 24th, she makes another purchase. Okay, we need the average daily balance, finance charge, and new balance. So let's start with the average daily balance. All right, on the 1st, okay, here's the balance, 165.50. Now, how many days is that balance on the card? Well, that's on the card August 1st through 6th, and then on the 7th, there's um, another purchase that's made, so the balance is going to change on that day. So this is the balance for six days, okay, August 1st through 6th. August 1st through 6th. Then, on the 7th, we now need to know what the balance is. All right, so I have 165.60, uh, sorry, 50, 165.50, and I need to add in the purchase of fifty nine ninety five and that gives me two twenty five forty five. All right, so that's the new balance on September, I'm sorry, August seventh. And how many days is that balance carried? Well, that's on there from August seventh through the eleventh and then it's going to change on the 12th. All right, so that's carried for five days. Okay, then on the 12th, we have a new purchase. So 225.45, all right, to that we're going to add 23.75, okay, the amount of the next purchase, and that's 249.20. All right, so that's the new balance on August 12th. And that's on the card from the 12th through the 17th. All right, or another uh, six days. Then a payment is made for $75. So we have this 249.20, and we want to subtract the payment of $75 and see what that is. Okay, and that gives a balance of 174.20. 174.20, and that's on the card from the 18th through the 23rd. And that's another six days. Okay, and then we need to consider the balance on the 24th. Okay, so another purchase is made. So we had 174.20, and then we're adding onto the card 107.43, and the new balance is going to be 281.63. Now, how long is that on the card? Well, that's from August 24th all the way through August 31st. All right, and that would be uh, another eight days. Okay, so keep in mind why we're doing all of this multiplication. Um, we want to find the average daily balance for the 31 days in August. So I'm supposed to be adding up all of those balances okay, and dividing by 31 to get the average. Now I could go through and add them each individually, but the shortcut is to see that if I have the same balance for six days in a row, instead of adding it six times, I can just multiply by six. So when you do all of these multiplications and then add, that gives you the total sum for the month of August. Okay, so multiply first, then add, and that gives a total 
sum of $6,913.69. Okay, and then divide by 31 and round to the nearest cent, and that's about 22302. So that's the average amount that was on the card any given day during the month. And if you look at uh, the different balances, okay, notice that you have some that are higher than that and some that are lower. So an average should be about in that range. Um, but at this point, you would want to make sure that you don't have an average that's like $5,000 or um, you know, $15, something that's too high or too low. Okay, so we're going to take that amount back to our problem. We now have the average daily balance, okay, 223.02, and we're going to use that to find the finance charge for the month. So the interest rate is 1.5% per month on the average daily balance. So the interest rate, okay, that's like part A, interest rate part B is that amount times 0.015. And rounded, that's about $3.35 in interest. Okay, and then the last step is to find the new balance on September 1st. Okay, well, we do already, um, we, we've already done most of the work. We've done all these additions and subtractions for purchases and payments, and we know what the balance is on August 31st. Okay, this 281.63. So the only thing that would be different from that to September 1st would just be the interest or the finance charge that's added in. Okay, so we have 281.63. Okay, and then you want to add in the finance charge, the 335. So the new balance on September 1st would be 284.98. Okay, so let's recap. Um, start by finding the average daily balance. Okay, you want to do the, the additions and subtractions all along. Add in purchases, subtract payments. Okay, find the balance on each day and then multiply by the number of days that that balance is carried for. Then divide by the number of days in the month and that gives you an average daily balance. Okay, multiply that by the percentage rate to find the finance charge and then the new balance is always going to be the last balance that you had for the month plus the interest. Okay, we'll try one more example, same type of problem. A credit card statement for the month of November showed the following transactions. Okay, so we had a previous balance from uh, the month before. Okay, then some purchases, some payments. And same thing, all right, so we'll start with the average daily balance. So on November 1st, we have this previous balance, okay? And that's gonna be the balance for three days, November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Okay, then for, on November 4th, all right, don't use the 531.62 as the balance. Um, that's, the, that's a purchase, so that needs to be added to the previous balance to get the new balance. All right, so next step is 937.25 plus 531.62. And the balance on the card is actually uh, 1468.87. Okay, 1468.87. 87. Now that's carried on the card from November 4th all the way through the 12th, so that would be for nine days. Okay. Then on the 13th, a $400 payment is made, so now we need to subtract 400. Okay. And the new balance as of that date is $1,068.87. Okay, 1,068.87. Now that balance is carried from the 13th all the way to the, the 19th. All right, so that's seven days. 
then it changes again on the 20th. There's a purchase that's made, so we need to add in or, or onto the card 89.95, and the new balance is $1,158.82. Now that balance is carried on the card from the 20th through the 27th, so that's eight days. Okay, and then it changes again on the 28th, so there's a payment made, so I need to subtract $100, and that gives a balance of $1,058.82, and that's carried to the end of the month. So November has 30 days, so the 28th, 29th, 30th, that would be um, a balance carried for three days. Okay, then to find the average daily balance, you want to multiply all of those and add to find uh, the total. We'll start there and then we'll divide by 30. So I have a total of 35,960 and 69 cents. Okay, so that's the sum of all of the balances on the 30 days in November. And then we need to divide by 30 to get an average daily balance. All right, round to the nearest cent, and that would be about $1,198.69. Okay, so quickly, quickly look through this list of balances, and we want to make sure that that number is somewhere in the range of those. Um, it's a little bit more than the first one, and then it's kind of in between all the others. It's lower than some, higher than some. So that's at least a reasonable um, guess for the average balance. So that's part A. And then for part B, to find the finance charge, we need to find 1.9% of the average daily balance. So multiply 0 0.019 times the number from part A, 1,198.69 cents. And round to the nearest cent, and that would be about $22.78. Okay, so that's part B. And then part C, find the new balance on December 1st. Well, we know the balance as of November 28th. Here it is. We'll do that one in yellow, okay? And so the only thing that will be different by December 1st is we need to add in that interest. So we have $1,058.82 and add in the $2278. So the new balance as of December 1st is $1,081.60. Okay, um, so that's it for that, that problem. All right, so we've looked at two different types of interest, the unpaid balance method and the average daily balance method. And there is an extra credit option if you'd like to, to research these. Um, you will need to probably look through the fine print for a credit card agreement, or you may need to, um, to phone the, the credit card company or look online to see which of these two methods is used.